Hey guys, Juice here, and welcome back to the Sonic Adventure 2 Dark Story Tutorial. Today we're going to be going over Egg Quarters, which is the second Rouge stage. Real quick guys, if you could, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you end up enjoying it. That would mean a lot to me, I put a lot of effort into these videos. Also, if you haven't seen the rest of the tutorial, then make sure you check them out in the card above. Without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do when you start off the stage is there are hint monitors on the left and uh, right of you here. What I like to do is I like to do a short glide forward and then read the hint like this. From here what I would do is I would jump onto this slope and then jump again and turn the camera to see a free piece that's here. This free piece that I'm checking for here is called On the Needle. From here we can go to the first piece which in this case is six Eggman marks question mark. Uh, so what I would do in this hallway right here in general is I want to kick Jump there. Hey look we got a free piece Maybe if I can get it. Hello uh, I'm so upset I'm so upset. Just give it to me. Just thank you And there's the six egg man <laughs> mark. So so this would be an incredible set um, normally, even without checking the, free, the third piece, which is a dark room. Um, okay. So that's also awesome. So what we do here, obviously, is you wouldn't normally have the power up, so you have to get this power up at some point. I have already gotten it, but in this case, you glide, you glide past it so that uh, this doesn't go down. And then you could just uh, grab the, uh, the upgrade. If you haven't checked the hint yet, there's a hint right here as well. So we were pretty close to that third piece from where we were. Before I go over some piece locations, I want to go over general movement for the stage. So one thing we're going to talk about is slope jumping, which is, I mean, exactly what it sounds like here. Pretty much just you, you jump as soon as you get onto uh, the ledge right here so that you're not being slowed down if you needed to check something. So uh, like for, for example, right here where we check for on the needle, we do that. Uh, another one would be over here, where you could you could do one of those if you wanted. But normally, you want to take down these two uh, these two guards, these two uh, gammas, these two gamma robots, because you could get free pieces in them. You can also get free pieces here in this guy. It's uh, the piece name is called the Foreman. So how I'd normally do this. Just like that. That's a good way to hit all three of those pieces. And then by then, you're over here so you can get the upgrade. And by then, you've checked for uh, for a few free pieces. The free pieces in question are on a needle, yellow head, red warrior, and the foreman. So those are the those are the four pieces that you've checked so far. And then you get the upgrade, and you're going to the piece in the shadow of a scurrying bug. So here's another little tip for you uh, as you're approaching this you can jump right at the ramp there right at the ramp to right before this button essentially if you jump too late or don't jump at all then you're just going to skip past it like that and then you have to climb up here like this which is a bit slower um, you're much better off just or or you end up doing that which isn't bad either if you're a little too uh, late or too early rather One other thing that I should mention in this level in general, the way you escape, I mean, most casual players know this, but the, the way you escape the beetle is by going into the shadows. So if you're afraid of the beetle, like, uh, if you're afraid of the beetle shooting you in certain situations, then just make sure to run through any of these shadows, like in the pillars, and you'll be fine. That's like, that's like the best way to move throughout. Full scale I would be a great piece one. Oh.
You know what? <laughs> this one's not bad either. This is a piece you have to go into the upgrade room for, and since you already have to go in there anyway, that's no big deal. It's right here. There are actually a couple other pieces in this room as well, like um, Brown Between Black, which is right here, and some others that are along the wall here. Uh, so real quick, one, one thing I wanted to go over is this ghost. Um, if this ghost is alive... Then when you're kicking over here, like where from where it's from normally, it'll like send your kick in in weird places because it's half targeting the ghost. But once it's gone, you can kick normally. I'll show you an example of that happening. See, it'll do something weird like that. And you really don't want that to happen, so you usually want to wait. Unless you've already taken it out, you want to wait before kicking. Life sentence would be right here. So that's about it for general movement. I would just make sure you implement as many of these slope jumps as possible. Because they can really help you. That way, you know, because normally you wouldn't really be able to reach up there without going under the slope first. Like, the, the closer you are to this uh, area, the better. You get more height from it. And then as soon as you land perfectly on the ground, you can start with the kick excel, which I went over in my Dry Lagoon video. Which is basically just, like, when you don't have a lot of speed and you need to reset your speed... You can do a, a little uh, a little hop, like let's say you're you're at a standstill right here, and you you take all this time to build up your speed into a run, but from a standstill you can do a short glide, and hold forward a short glide and hold forward and then kick, and then you have all that speed. So it's pretty useful. But yeah, I, uh, that's like generally it as far as movement stuff goes. Uh, as you can see, we can find a couple other free pieces moving back and forth between these three rooms. Alright, so now that I went over most of the movement stuff that I had to go over, I'm going to be going over what's called death strats for this stage. So if your piece 1 is in green hallway, then you have a 19 out of 20 chance of it being either in the red room or the red hallway for piece 2. So what you want to do is as soon as you get a green hallway piece 1, you want to throw yourself into a flame in the enemy to lose the rings and die as soon as you can. The other 1 out of 20th chance would be in Fear of Heights. If you get a green room piece 1, then it's still a 19 out of 20 chance for a red room or hallway piece 2. Then the other piece would be somewhere in blue room. So we're going to be going over that now. The reason why I'm going through blue to get to green anyway is because you would need to go there because you would need to go there to get the upgrade. So now I've killed myself and we'll see how we'll see what I have here. Okay. So it's yellow head. Which is a red hallway. Right here. We're gonna run back this way. This could either be a, a blue piece three or an altar room piece three. And it's an altar room piece three, which is why we went this way. It's like usually an altar room piece three. And there we go. We're going to do a couple more examples of these. Thank you. 
Most of the time when you do get the red piece too, you actually don't even have to read the hint. So I'm going to go over how you can read the pings alone. Though it's always safe to check the ping if you don't know. You can like check, you can do a couple strats and then check the hint if you want. Um, that's usually what I do if I, if I can't find it right away. It's something that um, takes a lot of time and practice. But I'll just go over a few things with you guys. Honestly, there's not too much to go over with the stage in general. It's just a lot of piece memorization and practicing going through and throughout the, the stage, all the hallways, all the rooms, learning the slope jumps like I was talking about before, learning how to cancel your, your climb animation by doing the jump and then the glide and then kick like I was talking about. That's all super important in this stage because it's all small optimizations movement-wise. But yeah, let's go over some of those um, those ping reads. Okay, so if we have no ping like this, um, what we want to do is we would come up here. And then from here, you, you, would, you would be able to see it if we, if we had no ping. And it would be um, Holy Altar, most, most likely, I believe. Or, um, or this guy. And that's funny that our piece 3 is also in red. So let's just check what it is real quick. Dark red and white stripes, which would be right here. I'll get a better one for you guys. Okay, so let's say we have a yellow ping here. What you can do is you can do a spiral upper. And if it pings like that, then what, what the piece that it's going to be is most likely Gorilla's Hideout. Uh, oops, come on. Oh my goodness. Which is right in here. Uh, if it didn't ping when you did the spiral upper, which by the way is just rotating the analog stick and then hitting the B button like that. Uh, if it didn't ping, then you would go behind you to see if it was blue-eyed Eggman or not. Uh, but because it did, you know that it is Gorilla Sideout. Uh, from there, if uh, neither of them pinged, then you could come over here. 
and you would be able to um, not only see the hint to read it, but also if it if it started uh, pinging closer here, then um, this would be the piece right under here. You also have the two uh, pieces that are in here, which is uh, under there or the whatever that piece name is. I'm, I'm really showing off my, my memory right now. A white middle finger, which is pretty much where if it takes a moment to go yellow, it's either going to be in here. Like, let's say it wasn't yellow right off the bat, but you saw it ping green for like a second. Then it's most likely in here. Um, and if not, then I believe it would be in here, which is a dark room. I could be wrong on that one. But, like, if it didn't ping over here, then you could just read the hint, and then you would be able to tell. Now, again, uh, like I was talking about before, when you have the piece three, it's, like, it's pretty likely to, to be over here. Uh, in this case, it wasn't. There are actually two pieces called Dark Sonic. Uh, there's one in blue and one in the altar room. So, uh, let's say your piece two is actually, um in red hallway instead of uh, just the red room. Then you'd be able to tell whether or not it's this dark Sonic because you could come over here and, and if it started pinging, then it's the one over here. And then from there, you'd have to turn around. But this dark Sonic piece in question is right here. Uh, but now I guess I'll just go through some examples with you guys of how the stage should look like all together. Honestly, if you have an altar piece one, sometimes it's better to just die and re-roll a piece, but... Because you can get pretty bad sets with it, in my opinion.
So yeah guys, that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Honestly, there wasn't too much to go over, but I hope the death stress that I did talk about did help a lot, along with the general movement in this stage. I can answer more specific questions if you want to leave them in the comments down below. That would mean a lot. I also have a Discord community you can join, along with the Sonic Adventure 2 community Discord that you can join. And just in case you forgot, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like if you liked the video, dislike if you didn't. And make sure you check out the rest of the tutorial. And that's going to do it for me. Sayonara!